Good evening. This is the Guyana Learn Channel's News in Capsule for Tuesday, July 20, 2021. These are the top stories we will be covering. First regional kidney transplant done at the GPHC. Flood affected citizens to get financial aid. In the world of sports, U.S. gymnasts test positive for COVID. And regionally, St. Lucia's elections being monitored by CARICOM. New Prime Minister appointed for Haiti. And internationally, Jeff Bezos returned from space flight. With the news in detail, I am Danelle Singh. The Georgetown Public Hospital Corporation made history yesterday following the first successful regional kidney transplant at the Nephrology and Kidney Transplant Department. Minister of Health Dr. Frank Anthony said the ministry is committed to providing the necessary tools to enhance the capacity of the department. He extended congratulations to Dr. Kishore Prasad and his team for successfully completing the surgery on a patient from outside of Guyana. The health minister said the government is working on improving the delivery of health care services, not just for Guyanese, but for those in the Caribbean. Dr. Jermaine Bristol, who traveled from Grenada to undergo the surgery, thanked the government and people of Guyana for providing her with a new lease on life. Her 19-year-old son, Jerome Bristol, donated his kidney. The surgery was successfully completed on June 14, 2021. Head of the transplant team, Dr. Prasad, explained that there were several complications. He disclosed that while the kidneys start working almost immediately post-surgery, it took almost three weeks before Dr. Bristol's kidney started working. However, efforts were made to ensure her kidneys are back to normal function so that she will be able to live a normal life. Meanwhile, Dr. Anthony disclosed yesterday that the government of Guyana is currently working on the first draft of the transplant legislation. Although the health ministry has been making strides in organ transplant, the absence of the transplant legislation is hindering Guyana from being recognized internationally. The legislation will not only cater for transplantation alone, Dr. Anthony explained, but also biobanking, a new area of medicine that the country aims to develop the capacity for. The Guyana Medical Council, along with Dr. Kishore Prasad and his team, had met with the Minister of Legal Affairs and Attorney General Anu Nandlal back in January regarding this legislation. A subsequent statement from the Attorney General's chambers noted that there is no legislation governing, authorizing, and regulating the donation of tissue and organs to persons who meet the criteria of being a donor or recipient of such donation. As such, in order to protect citizens from being victims of trafficking in human organs and tissue, proposals will be made for the legislation to prohibit this. The legislation will also create offenses and penalties to monitor such grim incidents. The statement noted that a consultative approach has been agreed upon, which will include consultative engagements involving all stakeholders and associations and their collective input will be channeled into the legislation and ensuring regulations. Dr. Prasad had been lobbying for years for such legislation, which will also save lives. The public hospital has the capability and equipment for such operations, but there is no legislation to govern it. This was extracted and modified from the Department of Public Information and the Newsroom. Vice President Dr. Barrett Ajagio says the government will soon begin the distribution of financial aid to support those persons who were severely affected by the unprecedented nationwide flooding. During an interview last Friday, the Vice President reaffirmed the government's commitment to supporting those who suffered losses due to the flood. He recalled that the administration acquired a $10 billion supplementary fund in May as part of the government's immediate relief efforts. Dr. Jagu noted that the government has now an estimate of the number of households affected and necessary work has begun with identifying how much and the various grants that will be distributed. Dr. Jagu said His Excellency Dr. Mohammed Irfan Ali will be making an announcement on this relief initiative soon. Meanwhile, floodwaters have significantly receded in several communities, allowing for several residents who were being housed at shelters across the country to begin returning to their homes. As of July 9, 184 persons were housed in shelters in Regions 2, 5, and 10. This is a marked reduction of the 257 persons who were being housed in 12 shelters as of July 2. 
Meanwhile, the vice president reiterated the government's commitment to achieving objectives including raising the old age pension from $25,000 to $40,000, making tertiary education free, and bringing on stream the gas to energy, which will cut electricity costs by 50%. This was extracted and modified from the Department of Public Information. And now in the world of sports. A female United States gymnast tested positive for COVID and the team member has been identified as a close contact. The gymnast, who was not displaying any symptoms, tested positive at the team's training camp in the city of Inzai. Both athletes have now been transferred to a hotel to quarantine with the rest of the squad, having moved to Athletes Village in Tokyo. The U.S. Olympic Committee, USOC, noted that the athlete was an alternate or a team member included as a reserve. This was extracted and modified from BBC Sport. And now for regional news. A new prime minister supported by key international diplomats will take charge of Haiti, an official said on Monday. A move that appeared aimed at averting a leadership struggle following the assassination of President Jovenel Moïse. Ariel Henry, who was designated prime minister by Moïse before he was slain but was never sworn in, will replace the country's interim prime minister. Haiti Elections Minister Matthias Peer told the Associated Press. The political turnover followed a statement on a Saturday from a key group of international diplomats that appeared to snub Claude Joseph, who has been leading Haiti with the backing of the police and military since the July 7 assassination of Moïse, called for the creation of a consensual and inclusive government. The core group is composed of ambassadors from Germany, Brazil, Canada, Spain, the U.S., France, the European Union, and representatives from the United Nations and Organization of American States. On Monday, the U.N. issued a statement calling on Joseph and Henry and other national stakeholders to set aside differences and engage in constructive dialogue on ways to end the current impasse. The UN added that Joseph and Henry made significant progress in the past week and that it supports dialogue to find minimal consensus for holding fair legislative and presidential elections. This was extracted and modified from Kentucky Daily. At the invitation of the government of St. Lucia, the Caribbean community CARICOM will be fielding a CARICOM election observation mission to monitor the general elections which will be held in the country on Monday, July 26, 2021. The 10-member mission will be headed by Ms. Fern Narciss Scope, Chief Elections Officer of Trinidad and Tobago. The CARICOM election observation mission proposed to meet with the electoral officials, leaders of political parties and other stakeholders of St. Lucia. It will also monitor the election campaign environment and the voting process, including the opening of the poll, the casting of votes, the closing of the poll and the counting of the ballots. The members of the observation mission will arrive in St. Lucia over the period of July 20 and 22 and will depart on July 28 and 29, 2021. This was extracted and modified from CARICOM today. And now for international news. Billionaire Jeff Bezos blasted into space on Tuesday in the first crewed flight of his rocket ship, New Shepard. He was accompanied by Mark Bezos, his brother Wally Funk, an 82-year-old pioneer of the space race and an 18-year-old student. They traveled in a capsule with the biggest windows flown in space, offering stunning views of the Earth. All four passengers have now parachuted safely back to Earth after their 10-minute, 10 10-second 10 trip. New Shepard, built by Bezos' company Blue Origin, is designed to serve the market for space tourism among the super wealthy. On this flight was the oldest person who has been flown to space, Miss Funk, and the youngest student, Oliver Damon. The spacecraft lifted off at 9.12 EDT from a private launch site near Van Horn, Texas. After the capsule touched down, Bezos said astronaut Bezos, his call sign, best day ever. He later said, my expectations were high and they were dramatically exceeded. Two minutes into the flight, the capsule separated from its rocket and continued upwards towards the Kerman Line, the most widely recognized boundary of space, 100 kilometers up. The newly minted astronauts shouted wow and cheered. This was extracted and modified from BBC News. With that, we've reached the end of today's broadcast. Be sure to join us again Thursday right here on the Guyana Learning Channel for more educational news and updates. 
On behalf of the technical team, thanks for watching and happy evening.